Hello and welcome to the third video in the quadcopter build series 7. In the first video we went and put this frame together and then in the last video in this series we put all of the pieces on here. So we installed the motors, the ESCs and the flight controller. We also popped on a little RXSR receiver and configured that as well. Now, if you are a new builder to quadcopters, then this is probably not the series for you. There are two other series on the channel, Quadcopter Building for Beginners Series 1 and 2, that go through every single step and explains why we're doing everything. So if you're new to quadcopters, I'd recommend going and having a watch of those two first, and then everything I'm doing in this video will make more sense. So again, this is the Chameleon TI frame from Armatan, and we are using the CR Racing F4S flight controller with Sabotage RC ESCs and motors. And again, I'll put links in the description so you can find everything you're interested in. Now, where we left it at the end of the last video, uh, hopefully you've just come from the last video, so you're kind of following on. We had set up the receiver, and I talked about going into BL Heli because it appeared when we tested the motors at the very last thing we did, two of them were m moving the wrong way, and that's pretty standard stuff. If you set up all four arms identically, because two of the motors turn clockwise and two of the motors turn anti-clockwise, you'll find that if the motors are all wired identically, two of the motors will be the wrong way round. In this case, the two motors that were problematic for me were this, motors one and four, so I had to reverse them in BL Heli. And all you have to do there is make sure that the battery is connected to your model and that you have just checked that everything is fine in beta flight. Then go into BL Heli Suite, connect to the model with the battery connected, and then click on the read settings, reverse then the ESCs that you're interested in, write those settings back to the ESCs and then one final check I normally just read the settings back just to confirm that it has all saved it brilliantly. Once you've done that you could spin it up and just test it's moving the right way. Um, I tend to find just putting a finger against the can I can feel which way it's moving although if I'm not sure I just put a bit of tape over the motor shaft and uh, just feel how it's all going along. We will put good old cyclone props on here at the end, uh, but I'll decide what color we'll use, but that will be towards the end of the video. So in this one, what we're gonna do, we're gonna install the camera. We're also gonna put the smart video transmitter on here as well. Then we'll go out and give it a quick test hover, and then I'll show you how the camera control works. So the only other thing I've done in between that initial video that we were looking at and this one here is I have put the camera inside the canopy. Now to put the camera inside the canopy, I'd recommend to actually take the canopy off, uh, do it inside the titanium cage that's at the front of both this model and the rooster model available from Armatan. If you just undo the two screws at the bottom here, the cage comes off and the screws to hold the camera in place is actually part of the Armatan kit with the mini camera sizes like this mini Predator here, then you will have to put the uh, the little side pieces on that make it into a full-size camera and then it'll fit beautifully inside. Now we are going to install uh, four wires here from the camera onto the flight controller. So we're going to have the same stuff as normal. We're going to have the voltage, ground, and we're also going to have the video signal. Surprise, prize. But we're also going to install the OSD wire, which is the white one in this image, onto the camera control pad on the flight controller as well. So hopefully we can access the Predator's on-screen display using the sticks on our Tyrannus and change the way that it's performing. Now, I've had questions about this in the past. Older versions of this Mini Predator, the versions of the firmware, didn't work particularly well so if you try this and it doesn't work and you're using an old predator that is probably why i'm not aware of any way that you can actually update the firmware sadly but this new version of the camera that's specifically made and branded armatan uh, is designed to be able to do that so that's what you need there the only other thing to mention is on the flight controller, you may have noticed when we were looking at it in the last video, there are two solder pads, one for 5 volts and one for 9 volts. You can decide with this flight controller what voltage you want to send to the camera 
and video transmitter and that's what that pad is selecting by default it's on 9 volts and 9 volts is perfect for me both the camera and the video transmitter that I'm using here will both work beautifully on 9 volts if you have a setup where you want 5 volts then you could change that bridge Unfortunately, that bridge sets the voltage for both the camera and the VTX. So if, for example, you wanted to run your VTX at 9 volts, then you'd leave the 9 volt piece bridged and then you'd pick up 5 volts from somewhere else on the flight controller. There are lots of other spots for 5 volts, including the LED pad. You could use that potentially to run a 5 volt camera. So let me pause it there. Let me go and connect these wires. Uh, I had to tweak the wiring loom a little bit on the back of the camera so that I ended up with these four wires to go onto the flight controller. So I ended up kind of jerry-rigging something out of the loom that came with the camera because obviously I'm not going to install the on-screen display. All I did was just use a little pin to unpick a couple of the wires so that I could get four decently long wires. And I'm not going to make this really short. This uh, I'm going to try and have it so that I could take the cage off if I wanted to swap the camera again. So I'm going to leave a little bit of slack uh, that will kind of go down there uh, before I make the ends off. That way that uh, I can take the cage off and play with the camera without everything getting really taut or trying to have to try and get my fingers in here or a pair of tweezers to unplug it from the back of the camera. So let me quickly make those ends off and then let's come back and have a look at the VTX. So there we are, that is the camera installed. Hopefully that's going to work now for the camera control as well. And there's a little bit of slack there on the flying lead so that I can hopefully pull the cage out to get to everything. Right, next job then is to install the video transmitter. Now this isn't one that I've actually played with an awful lot. This is kind of a new thing for me, um, but I like the idea of lots more manufacturers starting to come out with smart video transmitters. Now the challenge to fit this is the way it comes, it comes with this uh, quite long cable here. So I need to find a way to fit it in. Now what I did when I was kind of playing around, you have to be careful the minimum radiuses on these kind of um, wires connect to these collector cables. If I kind of put that through the isolated mount at the back, it kind of wants to sit about there and that's not that's probably the minimum strain on that particular cable. Hopefully you can see that on the video. So what I did, I created a 3D uh, printed mount here that also has the hole at the side uh, because it does have a manual button as well. And in case we have problems with the smart audio, I still want to be able to get to that little smart button at the side. The camera catches up. Come on. Uh, to be able to change the settings. The LEDs unfortunately are all underneath. I'm not going to be able to see those, but hopefully if I'm using smart audio settings to set everything up, that should work. So the way it works is that I can kind of bend this holder. It'll snap in and hold it in place. I might put a little bit of tape under one side. I don't know if you can see that just to keep it in place. And then that just fits over the top of the flight stack held on with a couple of bolts so some little nylon bolts will space everything beautifully and it'll all fit underneath and it'll go at the back so that's how we're physically going to install the blooming thing how are we going to do it electrically how do we wire this in now there are four connections again for this really uh, we have on um, by default it has the wire that would go to your camera. It has the power supply for itself and you have the wire for smart audio. Now we are only going to need the video cable out of this three wire connection because we don't want the video transmitter to power the camera. Uh, the camera has already been powered by the flight controller. That's already taken care of. So what I'll end up doing here is using this red and black wire along with the white wire going to whatever we're going to use to send the smart audio settings so that we can change everything and then we're going to use the yellow wire from here. So let me very quickly show you what that looks like in a wiring diagram. There's the FX877 VTX and we are going to connect it like that. Again, the four pads are nicely at the bottom so normally with a uh, a build like this um, having the camera connect at the front and the video transmitter connecting at the back is fantastically logical unfortunately I'm making a mess of that because my video transmitter 
is going to be sat on the top. So I'm going to have to put my cables here in a way. If I just undo this, I'm going to kind of do it so that they're like that. Bring up the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Um, kind of do it like that so the lead is there so I can pop that in the back of the video transmitter when it's done. So again let me just pause that and put that all together and then we'll come back and then we can start actually putting the final bits onto this model and thinking about getting ready to fly. So here's what that cable looks like, all soldered into those bottom four pads and I've rooted it around so that it is nice and flat against the top of the flight controller. Again, I want to be very careful to make sure that none of the cables I'm routing under and over the flight controller because I've got a slightly odd layout in this model is going to be touching lots of other things because they could potentially transfer vibration. So the last thing then is for me to physically fit the video transmitter on top of the flight controller. And I'm going to have to not only pop it into the 3D printable cage, I'm going to have to then pop the spacers on top of the flight controller. I'm not going to really tighten those nuts down loads and loads because I don't want to compress the anti-vibration mounts that are on the CO Racing F4S flight controller itself. And then once they're in place, just popping the 3D printed mount on the top and securing that with another set of nylon M3 bolts. Once that's done, just a case of pushing the SMA connector out through the electrically isolated bits and pieces at the rear. It's not a particularly long one this. There are nylon washers that come in the kit with the Chameleon TI. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to use them here so I'm just going to see how it works. Just nip down through the electrically isolating rubber grommet that's there to protect the antenna at the back. Last job then is to put the shrouds over the antennas and to then use a little bit of heat just to soften them up so that you can angle them into a 90 degree V at the back of the model and that should mean that we get pretty good reception. So we are nearly at the end here. At this point I'd recommend keep your props off but install your video antenna at the back and then we need to set up the UART in Betaflight to tell it that we have a couple of extra things going on here. So the first UART we need to change is going to be UART3. We're going to have to turn that on so that it's set for telemetry and we're going to be using smart port telemetry as we're using the RXSR receiver. And we're also going to change UART4 to be TBS Smart Audio because that is what this vid smart video transmitter is actually going to be working on. So once you've done that, click save. Also make sure you go into the configuration and turn on telemetry. That's really important too. And then that should enable both the camera control, the telemetry, and also the pieces as well. You'll notice in here, I've not changed anything for the camera control as well. By default, with the way it's set up and supplied, the CR Racing F4, particularly with this Foxeer camera, will just work out the box. You don't need to do any, add any resistors or capacitors or any of that nubbins. It'll just work. I'll show you that in a second. Last hot tip I'll give you is because we are going to be accessing the on-screen display from the camera as well as have the OSD from Betaflight itself, I'd set up an additional switch to turn your on-screen display on and off. Uh, so this is how I did it on mine. That means that when I want to go into the camera settings, all I have to do is flick that switch on the transmitter. It removes the Betaflight on-screen display and that lets me get at a nice empty screen so that I can get see the camera settings nice and clearly and I can set them up. So let me very quickly show you how the camera settings work. So here we are on the table, we've got the machine in the corner looking at one of the printers on the desk and I have my Tyrannus radio turned on ready to rock and roll as well. So if I just power up the model then we get the standard welcome screen and we can still access the beta flight menu in the standard way that we've always done and so we can change things like the smart audio settings i've got my video transmitter on this thing set up for fat shark 1 25 milliwatts and that all seems to work beautifully and then let me show you, you can also access by holding the throttle to the middle position pushing it over to the right it will take you into the fox Air menu and with the beta flight on screen display turned off by that little switch on the radio, I can navigate around. So the way it works is the right hand stick up, down, left, right, navigates you through the individual menu items and to enter 
or accept something, then you flick the your to the right hand side and you can navigate all of the settings in the menu without having a separate on-screen display. Final thing then is to fit the props. Surprise, surprise, we're gonna use Dell Prop Cyclones. These nice bright orange ones on this model just helps me find these things when it comes down in the grass. Again, I put the beeper on there and I might put a single LED strip uh, in some clear heat shrink at the bottom of the model as well to help me find it if it lands upside down. But for now, the last thing we need to do is take it out and give it a test hover in the back garden. So hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that have been following along and been interested in the Chameleon TI frame. All of these parts are working beautifully together. I am thinking of doing a how to tune a quadcopter simply video. So if you want to see that, let me know. It'll be part of the new common radio control questions answered playlist that I'm just starting at the moment. So thank you for bearing with it. Again, this Chameleon TI and all the links are underneath the video. And now I just need to go out and keep putting it through its paces. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.